Hey guys, today I'm going to be giving you a free Discord header template. So if you've watched my previous videos, you probably know what I mean by headers. But if you don't, they're basically images that separate sections of a channel or introduce them. So as you can see on the screen here. Now if you head into the description below, you'll be able to find the Discord header template. And if you download that, you'll be able to open it in Photoshop. And today I'm going to show you how to edit that template and make it your own. Okay, once you've downloaded the file, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open and find the file you just downloaded. So for me that's right here, where is it? Template.psd, should be called something like that. If it's not then I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. Okay, and when you open that document it should look something like this. So here's just a guide to show you how to edit some of the stuff and how to use the template. But in this video I'm going to go through everything. Right, so we're just going to want to hide this and reveal the header itself. So when you export make sure you hide this. And if you enable this delay here, you'll be able to see what it would look like on Discord. So this is the colour of the dark mode of Discord, so you can preview what it's going to look like. If you want to preview the light mode, you can probably just set it to white. Okay, so I'm going to keep this enabled just so we can see everything clearly. Right, so the first thing, we're going to change the text. So if we go into this group here, if we expand that, where it says header text, and we're going to have these layers here. So the top one says subtext, and this is the one that says, you guessed it, subtext. And then main title down here also says main title. So let's edit the subtext first. This text can say whatever you want. So we're going to have to double click this thumbnail here, which shows up as a T. Or we can just press T on the keyboard and select the text tool. And then click where it says subtext. And then we'll enter that. Or you can just double click the thumbnail here. So say my server's called Atlantis or something like that, because I can't come up with a different word. I'm going to put my server name here. You can do whatever you want, as I said. So I'm just going to write Atlantis, there you go, make sure I spell that right, make sure you spell it right, okay, and now you're going to want to click here, so next up is the main title, so you're going to want to click the thumbnail here, click it twice, and you'll get taken to a different document, it's in a different document, which allows for this hue saturation to work, I'm not going to explain how, but that, that's just how it works, so it has to be in a separate document, so as you can see, main title .psb. it's a PSB, that's a smart object, so whatever you edit in here, it will be reflected in here. So I'm going to change this to something like, I don't know, let's say I want it to be for my welcome channel. So I'm going to type welcome. That actually doesn't really make any sense given the subtext, so I'm going to put information. Now as you can see, the document is not wide enough. So what you're going to do is press C, that will select the crop tool, and you should see these here. And then left click this, and drag it to the right, just so it covers the text. And you might want to make it a bit wider, just so the drop shadow doesn't get cut off. Because if you end the document right here, the shadow is just going to look abrupt and it's going to just cut off when you upload it to Discord. So let's make it that wide and I'll see if that works. It's kind of hard to say, you need to just upload it and then see if it, if it's cut off. Or you can just make a temporary background, so that looks fine to me. So I'm going to delete that. And this is where you can change the colour of it. So if you click this drop down here, and then double click gradient overlay. And that will take you to the blending options and the gradient overlay. So click this strip here and that will take you to the gradient editor. So double click the bottom one and you'll be able to change which colour is this. That's the colour up here at the top right. Just change the value and you'll see which side it changes. So that changes to the top right. So I'm going to set this to a blue, a light blue. Kind of goes with the uh, Atlantis name I had. And then press enter and then double click this one over here. And I'm going to make this a different kind of blue. Just experiment, see what works for you. And that looks good, but it looks too abrupt. I think the colours transition too quickly. So I'm going to up the scale a bit and then reset alignment just so it's in the centre. And this is a weird angle, you can change the angle to whatever you want. So you can have it up like that, sideways, or diagonally like I have it. And you can check this here, reverse, and that will change the direction of it. Now, if you click to the here, that will basically make it so you don't see any gradient lines. So sometimes when you make gradients, you see the lines blending all the different colours together. If you want to make that as smooth as possible, enable the other. You shouldn't be able to notice it for a header, but I do it anyway, just to make sure. I don't know what effect this has on the file size, it's probably not that significant, but I think it just allows for more colours. That way they can transition more smoothly. Right, so now I'm happy with that, and in the inner glow, this is still orange, so I'm going to click that and make it a nice blue. I want it to be visible, so you can kind of see the blue here, you probably can't see it on the video. If I enable that and then disable it, you can tell it's a lot softer. And this one here, the drop shadow, that's black, so you don't really have to change that. If you change the colour, you don't have to change this. 
because it's just black but if you want to add a color you can if you change color it's kind of like doing an outer glow it's a similar effect and you can edit the drop shadow however you want and once you're done click ok and if you did change the drop shadow make sure you expand the canvas and so it doesn't cut off the, the drop shadow ok now I'm done with that I'm going to press ctrl s or you can go to file save and that will save the smart object so if you go back into the main document as you can see it changed right here now this didn't really go to plan because it's too far off to the left so I'm going to press the C key again expand the canvas I'll do it this far just for now I'm going to go back and make sure that's perfect later so press V and then if you can't see the border here just make sure show transform controls is enabled and I'm going to drag it off so it lines up with the left of the A here just being very precise I'm going to move this over it's wide enough so I can just move it over now it says Atlantis information because it's the information channel in the Atlantis server right so I actually made that way too wide I don't know why I did that so I'm going to crop it there make sure again you keep in mind the drop shadow and don't cut it off now if you're lazy and you don't want to go into the text and change the gradient then what you can do is enable this hue saturation adjustment layer here play with this hue slider over here if you don't have it popping up and then go to window and properties it's under properties right here as you can see so if I change the hue it's not going to look as good as when you change the gradient because of the way hue saturation works it doesn't always look the best and bear in mind if you have a dark purple like this or a dark blue it's going to be kind of difficult to see on discord so bear that in mind unless you have the light theme of course so yeah you can play around with that and get some nice gradients again if you want more precise control and change each side individually then go into the text and change the gradient I'm going to undo that and hide that because I don't want the hue saturation now next up is the logo over here so if you want you can just hide this layer and then crop it so you can just see the text but if you want then you can have a logo so I'm going to enable that again and you're going to want to highlight the logo layer here right click and then go to replace contents up here and I'm going to navigate to the logo I'm going to use I'm going to use two examples here so this first one here is a square uh, it's a square layout so if I replace it with that it's actually circular because there's a mask here if I highlight this mask holding control you can see it's a circle so if I disable the layer mask you can see it's the whole icons here so if you want to have it as a square you can just disable that otherwise you can have it as a circle here and that will look nice and this has got a drop shadow behind it so if I double click this layer and actually it's an outer glow not a drop shadow very similar though. so if I go in this you can just make it black so you don't have to change the color every time or change it to whatever color you want and you, you know, experiment with that the, the darker it is the less you can see it so I was fine with that because it's a, blue, a dark blue logo so I'm going to cancel that now if you don't have a logo that's a square like I had or a circle it would be easier if I show you what I mean so right click again replace contents so this one here it's just like one shape as you can see here if I press V I'm going to want to make it bigger just so it uh, lines up to the bottom of this text on the top of this one roughly now if I click that and hold shift and alt so it scales proportionately it maintains the aspect ratio if I do that it cuts off because of this circle mask that we had for the other logo so if you don't want this circular cutout then right click the mask and disable layer mask and there you go it's gone and then I'm going to scale this back just to get it perfect and I'm going to press Control A and click this icon here that will vertically align it to the middle of the document now this has got a drop shadow so again make sure you don't cut it off and there we go now this shouldn't be in the document this is just the logo I was going to use as an example anyway so last thing I'm going to want to make sure we do is hide the discord preview and then we're going to save the document so press ctrl s or if you're on a mac i haven't mentioned this but if you're on a mac then use command s use command instead of control generally otherwise just go to file and then save or save as if you want if you don't want to overwrite the template so you can edit from it in the future then make sure you do save as and save it as a different document so i'm going to do that just so you can see the whole thing so save as and then i'm just going to name it edited.psd you can name this wherever you want so like information channel or whatever and then save there you go and maximize compatibility that's normally checked by default at least for me anyway and there we go it's saved now to export normally what people do is go to file save as and then they will select 
say that's type, they'll put PNG. If you want to make sure you have the highest quality possible, go to File, Export, and Export As, or Alt Shift Control W, if you remember that. And go to that. And again, make sure you have the Discord preview disabled. It'll take some time to load. You can't export until it loads. Okay, here's the preview. So, I'm going to go through the settings here. If you want to have the file be a bit smaller in terms of file size, you can enable this. I don't know how much it visually changes uh, the quality of the image. You can zoom in if you want. Pretty nice, pretty high quality, that is. And I think you can see the drop shadow a bit more easily here. So, if I check, it doesn't seem to cut off. So that's perfect. The less space you have around it, the bigger the image will be on Discord because of the way it resizes images and uploads them. So definitely make sure you have transparency enabled here. Of course, make sure you're on PNG first, because if you're on JPEG, then there will be no transparency on the background. So what you want is PNG, and that's higher quality than JPEG anyway. Right, and here the settings here, you don't need to change this. This is just telling you what the canvas size is. I usually just ignore this. I don't think it really changes much. I don't know enough about this to say anything about it, so I just have that enabled. Make sure I have it checked over here. And then export. I'll bring up this window, like if you did save as. So I'm going to call it edited.png and then click save. And there we go, it's exported. So if I check that, right, if I look down here, edited.png, this is where I saved it. Obviously bear in mind where you save it, I didn't mention that, but bear that in mind. Edited.png, it's on the wrong monitor, so. This photo view has a white background, so it's kind of hard to see. And I shouldn't have closed Discord, so I can actually show you what it looks like. Right, so I'm gonna upload the image to this uh, channel here, so I'm gonna upload it, navigate to the file, and then edited.png, whatever you called it, double click that, and upload. That might take a few seconds, and here we go. This is the header we just made with the template. So it's got the Atlantis logo over here, and it's called Atlantis Information because that's the server, Atlantis, and the channel I, I would be putting it in if this was a real example, I'd put it in the information channel. So again, the text can say whatever you want, the colors, you can change all that, change the logo, and make it really personal. In every Photoshop video I make, I forget to tell you what the font is, so it should be in the description. If I go in here, it's called Babis New. B-E-B-A-S-N-E-U-E -E -E, and it's the bold variant of it. That's what I use for both of the layers. So you're gonna to wanna to install that before you do this because otherwise, if you don't have the font, because it's not installed on the default system, if you don't have the font, then it's gonna to change to something else. So I hope you enjoyed the template and I hope you get a lot of uh, variety with your results and get it to look really nice with your logo on it. In the tutorial I made a while ago, I did show you how to make something similar to this, but there wasn't a logo in it. So if you wanna put your logo in it, you can use this template to do that and that will skip you going through the tutorial if you can't be bothered for that stuff. So thanks for watching, if you did like that template make sure you leave a like and let me know in the comments what video you want next because I'd like to hear your video ideas and hear what you would like to see. So if you download this make sure you leave a like, I really appreciate it. As I say one download equals one like. So thanks for watching, I'll see you next time and goodbye.